Hey, this is Derek Murphy. I want to tell you about something that I think is kind of exciting, which is a new program from KDP Amazon Kindle called Vela. This is the page of my Kindle Vela library. So if you don't know what Vela is, or if you're interested, maybe you've heard something about it. Um, I'm going to tell you why I think it's kind of a cool thing um, and show you how to upload and publish a first story to Kindle Vela. So real quick, basically the way that KDP has worked or KDP Select is you can upload a book and enroll in their three month exclusivity program. And then you also earn page reads on top of book sales or uh, separately from book sales. They're kind of two different monetization um, systems set up within KDP that you can opt into. This is a new development that's in beta that they're testing out. So Amazon tests a lot of things. We don't know for sure that this is going to stick around. This may not become a big deal. I've seen lots of little companies try to put out some form of serialized fiction as an app form, and they've never really done very well, and they've never really paid much for authors enough to make it worthwhile. But that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. This is basically serialized publishing. So the way that it used to work 100 years ago in the newspapers where fiction authors would submit a few thousand words of an episode and they would get paid by the word and then the next week the next episode would come out so that's kind of how kindle vela works in theory um, one of the reasons why it's different is just that amazon is one of the huge companies so rather than a new startup competing against amazon this is one of amazon's um, new arms it's possible that it will become a big thing because Amazon already has a ton of readers. Um, they may enjoy this kind of experience. But of course, right now, this is more of an experiment. The value of an experiment, though, is if you are the first to the platform, like when they're trying to get the ball rolling, it's possible, like they did with um, Amazon Prime or with any of the other new programs, that if you sign up early, you might get a whole bunch of extra visibility while they're growing their readership while there aren't very many other competitors in this space. So it's a possible chance to get your work out there in front of new readers in a different way. The other thing that I think is really cool, um, well, before I say that, the other reason I think this is interesting is because Facebook is also trying to do something similar at the same time. And this is also sort of what um, is already happening and has been happening on years for Medium. So Medium is a content strategy platform published by Twitter. So the three like major companies in the world, Twitter, Facebook, and Amazon, um, they realize that everyone's fighting for attention. They make a lot of their money from um, content articles. At least Twitter features short content, Medium features longer form content. Right now, Medium has had huge growth and they aren't monetizing it well because it's a pet project for the Twitter founder, um, but Facebook and Amazon, even though they both make money from attention and content, they don't really have a space for long form articles. Um, Facebook has recently announced that they're starting to develop something new where it might work like Medium, where people can publish longer form articles and possibly get paid for it. Um, this is sort of Amazon's chance to recognize that you know other major players are fighting for this competitive space, they better try to have something as well. Um, they have played around with other innovative forms of publishing in the past. They had Kindle Worlds for a while, a long time ago. They also had, um, I think they had their own form of sort of content publishing where you had to upload the first few chapters in a cover and get voted by the community and then they would publish your books. I forget what that one was called. Um, but anyway, the reason that this is coming up now is because there are other moves into this space from other competitors and they just want to make sure they, you know, tap that space. If it is going to be popular, they want to make sure they've got something there to fill what readers might be engaged with. This is maybe the next new big thing. But the other reason I think it's really interesting is that the payment structure is going to revolve on tokens. Um, and this isn't super clear yet how much a token is going to be worth or how much you're going to get paid per word or whatever. I think I heard that a token is worth about 100 words, but I, I feel like that can't be right. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Um, so anyway, we don't exactly know the pay structure yet. This is sort of the Wild West, um, but they do have a bunch of details that you can read through for your episodes. 
But the reason I think it's kind of cool that they're paying in tokens is that there's a, been a big, huge shift into cryptocurrencies recently. And a lot of big players, for example, um, Apple, I think even Facebook was considering it. They're considering having their own form of token or coin that works as a form of internal currency. So that seems to be something, you know, tangent to what's already happening in the cryptocurrency world where very big companies are starting to have their own coin or token system that rewards content uploaders um, that readers can buy in exchange for contents rather than buying a, a book for 299 they would buy uh you know a thousand tokens and they could use those to read the next episode of a story my guess is when they start out they're going to give away a lot of tokens to a lot of people um, and they would probably bear the brunt of the cost for that i would guess they would give out you know free tokens to the first hundred thousand subscribers or whatever which would be an upfront seeding cost that they would then pay when authors redeem those tokens for cash trying to get people into this platform that's speculative but i guess that's probably what's going to happen so let me click here into the Kindle Vela library. You can see I've already got something started. So I'll tell you a little bit about the project that I have started out. Um, this is a project I started a few years ago that I'm really excited about. It was one of the first major, well-plotted epic fantasy. I never really thought I was an epic fantasy writer who wrote with like dragons and stuff. Um, I think this started with a pre-made cover I bought. I've since bought like $1,000 worth of pre-made covers with dragons because I knew I wanted to tell this story and it was going to be a big deal because it's it's a really complex, very organized world building. Um, so I'm excited about it, but I never really got started with it. I had the first couple chapters roughly done. Um, I thought I had put out a sample somewhere, but I'm not sure if I ever did because I couldn't really find a super clean version. Hold on a second, I got stuck. Um, but since I've already got, I've got this story started, but I probably won't get to it soon because I have so many projects up in the air already. Um, I did, however, you know, this Kindle Vela program just came out. People were talking about it in my young adult authors group. And then I bought this amazing pre-made um, from a designer that I like that really fit this story. And like I said, even though I bought a lot of pre-mades before, um, this just felt kind of fortuitous where it's really great art. So one of the first tips I will say is, even if you're publishing a short story, my basic plan with this was um, something like five books at 40K. So shorter books um, rather than like three books at 90K for a series, it would be five books at 40K. That's sort of my plan. Um, I was already sort of planning on shorter episodic content with very heavy uh, cliffhangers. I already use a lot of cliffhangers in my writing, but for this kind of serialized content, it's even more important, especially when you get to the end of one episode, you need a really strong hook to get them to buy the next episode to keep reading if you're gonna break it up um, that way. So my plan was, I think, to publish the first book as a perma-free book, um, at least you know until it has a thousand reviews or whatever, and until I can finally finish up the rest of the series, which is not a smart way of publishing if you contrast it with rapid release, but that's just kind of the way that I do things um, is long-term and very slow. And I could play with a lot of ideas to kind of see what is working. But anyway, I've got a few chapters that are done and I've got this really amazing new pre-made. Um, what I was trying to say earlier is that even if you're giving away a free story, even if you're doing something perma-free or it's a, um, this could also be a really good opt-in teaser. I think I have like three 15K-ish shorts that are, um, lead in prequels to mainstream series that I'm developing. Um, so for those prequels, they're always a good idea to build your list, to put out on, you know, book funnel or other joint author promo platforms, and just always be kind of using it to try to get new readers into your list and into your stories. Ideally, they would then be able to buy more in that series. But since I don't have those finished, it's just kind of a way to get them into my list and hopefully introduce them to some of my other content, some of my other um, books. But the point of all that was that you still want your best content in your free stuff. You still want your best cover in your free stuff. Um, because there's even for a free book, there's a lot of competition. You don't want to, you know, the first 
opportunity, the first introduction you have with new readers, you want to be very powerful. So that's a really good story and also a really good cover. Um, so I'm excited to share this art just because I've got it. I set up um, by starting a new story here. And then I started filling in some details. So it says here, continue episode or manage your story. I haven't actually uploaded anything in this first episode. So I'm going to click on that here. Um, each episode has a name. So I don't usually number my, I don't usually name my chapter headings. Um, but in this case, I kind of do. It does say optional episode title. Um, but I think it is kind of cool. So the way I have it set up right now is the tower, the escape, the mark, the prince, the game, um, basically just vaguely epic fantasy sounding things. I want this to hit the epic fantasy genre tropes very hard. Here I, it says I can import episode text and I can also copy and paste the text directly below. I can use bold, italics, and underlines, but that's it. Um, and I'm just going to go to my story, which I don't think you can see because it's off um, grid. And I'm just going to copy and paste. All I've really done is um, sort of finish the first section or chapter. And what I mean by sort of is that I haven't perfectly edited this like I normally would if I was going to publish a book. Of course, you do want it to be as clean as possible. Um, I'll spell check it. I'll try to make sure there are no obvious errors, but I just won't add all the polishing or embellishment or description um, that I would normally go through the process if I was cleaning up for a full publishing project. And part of the reason is because if this is going to be successful for me, I'm probably going to need to keep putting out new content relatively quickly, um, You know, once a week, once a day, however you want to do it. Um, I would guess you'd want to keep the momentum by publishing several times a week um, and trying to get in new readers. It also says content must be between five, 600 words and 5,000 words. So this is kind of weird where um, this is a huge range. So if a token is worth an episode and episodes can range between 600 words or 5,000 words, um, my guess is readers will be able to see the word count. And so readers would naturally want to spend their tokens on more content. If somebody was writing longer episodes than someone with shorter episodes, that makes sense to me. I don't exactly know how all this is going to play out, um, but I would try to keep my episodes. I mean, in theory, I would keep my episodes longer, close to the limit, which is 5,000 words in practice. Um, I've already, you know, I've already got my chapter endings and, and cliffhangers and stuff set up. So I'm not going to arbitrarily inflate the word count to get to a different closing point because I want to end on those really strong hooks. I did try to copy paste um, in here, but I didn't like how the formatting looked. So I'm going to try to import an episode text instead. So that actually looks a little bit better. Um, I had tried to just copy and paste my text, but the spacing looked weird. I was copying straight from Microsoft Word into here. Um, and I it looked a little funny. I thought it probably wouldn't look good. This looks. I mean, it's not how I had formatted it. There are spaces between the paragraphs. Um, there aren't the, the indentations that I have set. But this is probably you know the way that it looks on their platform, which is fine. I also like that there's a little bit of a spell, spell check in here. Um, so real quick, I could just go through and look at the red you know notes. I've already spell checked this quite a bit. Um, but even so, you know, there's always the chance that you miss something. There's a few words that it doesn't recognize because, you know, their names or their words or whatever. Um, but mostly it, it looks fine. It looks pretty good. I can also add an optional author note. I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm going to use this as a call to action. So I say sign up to my VAP list and get full access to, to the full story. Um, I don't know if they're going to let me do this, but basically if they like one episode and they can't wait for the next one, I could try to do something where I, I was going to say I could try to do something where I give this story away to my email list first or on my website before I publish it here. But I'm pretty sure um, that this is also an exclusive thing on Kindle Vela where they want serialized content that has not been published anywhere else before. So what I could do with this call to action um, is you know I could do most of the story of the first book in Kindle Vela for a while and see how things go. Eventually, when the full book is finished and I'm going to publish it as a as an actual book, 
Um, I would have to take it out of Kindle Vela if I want to do that, which I might do, or I might just publish book two. You know, I could just use this for trying to get pre-orders to book two or trying to build my list or whatever. Um, you want to be careful about the rules and about duplicating content. But I, I do think having a strong call to action is probably better than having um, an author's bio, for example, in this author's note. However, I also don't know if they're going to allow this link. If they don't allow the link, I might change it or just you know have a basic link to my website. Basically, if it's a long link, it has to be linked so people can click on it um, because they're not going to bother to go and type it all in. But if you have a really clear, simple um, URL, mine's urbanepics.com, that's pretty simple. They could just Google it or find it. This all looks mostly fine. Um, the last thing down here is it says, the first three episodes can be read without token redemption. So that's kind of cool. For later episodes, the number of tokens a reader needs to unlock the website is set based on word count and capped at 50. So that's pretty weird, actually. Um, because like I was saying before, I did hear that it would be something like one token is 100 words. So you'd pay like 10 tokens for 1,000 words, which would be something like 50 tokens at 5,000 words. OK, so that actually makes a lot of sense. It's capped at 50 because the longest, um, the longest episode length is 5,000 words. So if you had a 5,000 word episode, um, it doesn't mean readers will necessarily buy the longer episodes this way, which is probably why they're, they're doing it this way. Because if it was just you know one token is one episode, then people would just always buy the longer episodes. But this way, you know, if I have an episode at 1,500 words, um, I would get 15 tokens. I'd get paid for the value of my word count, not necessarily just for the length of the episode. Um, so it sounds a little bit weird, but I'm actually I'm actually fine with that. I think that's probably the right way to do it. I can release now or schedule release, um, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to release this one right now and see how it looks. But then I could schedule, like if I was on top of things and organized, which I'm not at all, um, I could schedule, you know, I'm going to have a new episode out every week for the next three months until this book gets done. Um, that's scary to me, but that is also something that's sort of attractive. I might push to do something like that, um, but at least I could schedule out you know, the next three episodes, which I've already got basically written, or I could write, you know, in advance. And then once I've got some content, I could schedule out the next batch um, and get people excited about it again. I, it'd be a little bit hard to do it every week. I think you'd probably want to do like every week you do um, a batch of three, like every weekend you do three new episodes or something like that. Uh, that would probably work a little bit better. You'll probably want to keep them binge reading and you want the next episode available while they're reading the current episode. I can also go up here to open preview. I'm a little hesitant, but let's click on it and see what happens. So this is what's going to look like inside. And I also don't know if this is going to be a different separate app from the Kindle app, like on the Apple Store. Um, we don't know that yet. I did scroll down here to the bottom. It looks like the link did not work from the note from the author. So the call to action can't have a link, which is fine. Um, I might just reduce this to my, my simple website and then make sure I have a clean um, landing page. I'm going to go back over and, and check the rules more carefully to see whether I suspect um, I can't share this content anywhere else. But I could make a landing page for the book with the blurb and discussion about the the topics and then links to all of the episodes from my blog or from my homepage pointing here um, if I try to boost it. I'm just going to go down here now and publish. This is a little bit of a um, an experiment because you know I, I just woke up and I'm going to just finish writing this short and I'm going to publish it. Um, but here it goes. This is what it looks like. I have story tags. I have categories. I have a very short blurb, which I worked on this blurb a lot like years ago when I was pitching it to um, PitMad or whatever, the, the Twitter contest. Um, I do really like my art. I think that's going to help a lot. Um, it still has a logo from the designer on here because I just paid for but have not yet received the the new title version. Um, but I like just showing the art without the title anyway. You don't have a lot of space for this 
this art. Um, it's it, I didn't mention that earlier. It's a rounded picture. It's got to be 1600 by 1600, which is about half the size of a, of a book cover, which is generally 1600 by 2700, which is six by nine at 300 DPI. Um, so just something to keep in mind. It's more of a square like your audio book cover is. Um, but even so, I think I don't need the title here fighting for attention. I really want a very strong emotional image. Um, so I bought this art because it's it's beautiful. It captures the right emotion that I that I want this uh, dark epic fantasy to have. Um, but you could use, I mean, you could use a stock photo. You could use a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be a pre-made cover um, or even a cover for a book. You can just find any, you know, powerful image that's really going to work for your story. So talking about marketing and stuff, this is kind of weird because this is yet another unfinished series starter. Um, I have lots of unfinished series already that I'm not earning on because it's difficult to earn profit from fiction until you have a completed series and a box set so you can be competitive with advertising. Um, however, this is an opportunity I wanted to step into to try out. I think there's a chance to get some extra visibility for my brand and my platform. Um, you do want to do more than just upload your content. It's good to be first, but it always helps when you do more work than other people. Um, so what I'll probably do in the next couple of days is publish three episodes, um, which I can do. I've almost got the content for it. And the first three episodes are free. And then I can um, email my list and do some promotion and try to tell people about these three first episodes that they haven't read yet. Um, basically, I'll try to get them signed up for the Kindle Vela program to try it out and read my first three episodes. I don't know yet what this story is going to look like or what the reviews are going to look like. I assume there's going to be a place for people to leave comments or reviews. Um, I haven't yet made the comparison between Wattpad yet. Wattpad is the other pretty similar thing to this where you can upload serials of your fiction, um, but it's not very well monetized and it's more of a social network platform. So there's more features for interaction and commenting um, and you have to sort of be active on that platform. My guess is here, you won't have the social aspect. The reason I never really got into Wattpad, besides the fact that it's unpaid, um, is that you really have to invest time on the platform to build relationships. And I that's not what most authors want to do. They want to be putting out more content. Um, but I would like to check out what this looks like um, on the Kindle Vela store or whatever it is. So I did actually find a YouTube video from Amazon introducing Kindle Vela that was just published today, I think, um, that shows you what Kindle Vela looks like. It looks like a separate app. It looks like there are tokens that you can buy. Um, this is kind of what things will look like. There is a place for ratings or reviews. Um, also episode frequency, which is kind of interesting, um, something to be thinking about or concerned about, I would say you probably want at least for a month, um, but I would shoot for as many as 10 a month. If you're really gonna do it, I would focus on, like you don't wanna do anything half-assed. If you're really gonna do something in a new space, you wanna be the best in the new space. You wanna dominate the new space where there's the most opportunity for visibility, um, where everybody's kind of playing around. You wanna come in really strong, which may be what I try to do with this series I've started, um, if I can be organized enough to get some work done on it. And keeps them coming. It also told me how much things are going to cost. Uh, here. So it says you can buy tokens to continue. 140 tokens are 199. Um, so if I remember right, I think it was 50 tokens are 5,000 words. So 140,000, 140 tokens is like 14,000 words that you can buy for 199. Um, I don't know how much of that money will be paid directly to authors, probably much less than that. But considering that most authors sell a full length novel for 199 to like three or 499, it's not terrible. Um, for 499, they'd get 368 tokens, which would be 
36,000 words, I think. Um, and 999 would be, you know, basically a full length novel of 77,000 words. I hope my math is right. Um, if not, you can leave a comment. But um, basically, that's a little bit more than people would pay for actual books on Kindle, especially if they already have Kindle Unlimited and they're getting a bunch of their books for free or they only buy the 99 cent deals or discounts or freebie days, which a lot of readers do. They stick with the free stuff. There's so much free content out there already to consume. Um, I'm not sure that that this will take off the way that it, that it could. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot to be said for serialized content. The thing with you know, we're overwhelmed with with free books or cheap books or whatever, but we don't know what to buy, mostly because there's just too many choices. We don't buy new things unless we trust the authors. Um, this is probably going to work well for authors who already have an established platform or if mainstream publishers step into this space, which I don't know that they're going to do yet. Um, sometimes Amazon has, you know, deals with tried published authors already. But since this is going to be new content, I doubt most traditionally published authors are going to be developing new content for this space, which means it's somewhere where, at least when it's starting out, um, you know, it's a risk for self-published authors to put their content here without knowing if it's going to pay off. But it's a good risk to take. It's a space for us to stand out and create content for, you know, something potential. I don't know that they have the readers yet. I don't know that it's going to make sense to readers, but the value in serialized content um, is that if the first three episodes are free and if they can play around with this app and download, you know, lots of first episodes, it's inevitable that some of those stories are going to catch their interest enough. If they can't get the finished series um, or story without upgrading or paying more, you know, they'll resist it at first. They'll read all of the, um, the short free episodes, but eventually something's going to catch their interest enough where they think, okay, you know, fine, you got me. I'm going to upgrade for some tokens to read more of this story. You want to be that writer who makes them um, upgrade. I wonder too, if there's like a bounty for um, if someone signs up to buy your story first, if they pay you something extra, sometimes programs like this works like that. Um, but I don't know if this one will. So there's another cool, feature of how this works um, from the introduction video where when readers unlock a new episode, I think basically when they bought coins and they've unlocked an episode with the coins that they bought, they get a crown or a fave that they can gift to their favorite story. So if they're reading a lot of stuff, um, they can basically vote for the best story that they've read. Um, and those stories will be featured on the main page of the app. So it's sort of a way to organize the content in a way that Amazon is not set up to organize. Um, and it's a little bit of a problem because it's similar to the other publishing program that they had a while back where um, it's possible that crowdsourced stories could be vulnerable to manipulation. So for example, um, and it, it's always the case, like it's always been the case where some authors will figure out hacks to make money from Kindle by exploiting the system. And I'm not suggesting you do that, but for example, um, I could tell my audience, you know, go and check out my free episodes. If you like it enough to buy more and you want to buy some tokens, I would appreciate, you know, you faving my story, something like that. It's not manipulative. You're just asking your audience to support you. That's usually okay. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff about reviews in terms of service I've got on creativity. If you're interested in, in reading into the, the smaller fine text details about their terms of service. Um, but generally, you know, you can ask for support from your audience. So people who have a larger audience or who already have some kind of an established audience, I could probably get my story to rank pretty high on the homepage. Um, because I would be like, every time I publish a new episode, I would email my list about it and tell them it's available. Um, they would go and read it. And then, you know, I could ask them to a fave. So every week, if I publish a new episode every week, if I have a new story getting more faves, um, I would be able to keep my story visible in this platform in a way that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do 
on Amazon where, you know, my platform's not tiny, but even so, um, I might get like a hundred sales if I blast it out to my list. And with a hundred sales, I could get into like almost the top 1000, maybe on Amazon Kindle, but it would drop really fast because there's so much competition. Um, and there's no way to rank books with a word. You can review books. I think having reviews or conversion or traction on your book um, impacts your sales rank a little bit on Amazon, but it's just a, such a huge messy system with so many thousands of new books being published every month. It's really difficult to stay fresh um, because this is a new uncharted space. Authors who have some but what of a platform and who make an effort um, could get a lot of extra visibility while Amazon is promoting it to new readers and trying to get people to sign up. Um, anyway, we'll see how that all unfolds. So I also found over here on Publishers Weekly um, some more details about the payment. So they say that authors will be paid 50% of the token value, it says that here. Um, I didn't see that somewhere else, but it's probably true. So if I think back and try to remember what those tokens were worth, um, if, if 1,500 tokens are worth 15,000 words, I think that's true. Um, we would make like half of that. So I think it's like $7.50 for a 15,000 word short. Um, I might have screwed up the math again, but that doesn't sound that terrible. Um, it sounds like a pretty good rate for the word count. If I've completely butchered the math, which I suspect I've probably done, um, you can let me know in the comments. Otherwise, that seems like a reasonable amount to pay and more than um, what a lot of books will earn in Kindle Unlimited, which is kind of nice. Um, I do think it makes sense. You know, you can charge more for serialized content basically because it's the same thing about breaking a, a one big novel into shorter pieces. Um, yes, readers hate to be taken advantage of, but the thing is, if you make readers want something enough to pay for more of it, then they will pay for more of it. If you give them the opportunity to get it all for free, they will get it all for free. Um, it's always going to be a struggle between people selling things and people buying things of trying to work out the best deal for both. The people selling things want to make a profit. The people buying things want to save money. Um, it can seem a little frustrating for something like this to give you smaller episodes and make you buy to continue the story, but it's not like they're inventing something new. This has been around, you know, for a long time in the history of literature. This is the way that a lot of things used to work. Um, for, for quite a while. And it's not a new concept in modern times either. Stuff like this is rampant with, um, you know, serialized content on Netflix, for example, where you can buy the entire series for 20 bucks or you can buy each episode for $1.99, um, which is more expensive, you know, than you would pay five years ago if you were just buying a cable subscription maybe for TV. And it was just assumed that all this content was free. We are stepping in the direction of serialized content. We are also stepping into the direction of tokenized interaction or tokenized engagement where you buy tokens that are worth the value that you can redeem them for the content that you want to consume. Um, hope that makes sense. So these are, you know, I understand that the moves that Amazon's making with these. Um, I think it's a smart play and it makes sense in the context of the bigger moves in the market. Um, I also think it's a new opportunity for um, authors that I'm excited about. I think I will maybe wait a few days and see if I can see what the store looks like. I couldn't find anywhere that says, you know, when this app is actually going to be available, but I'm going to see if I can find it um, in the in the app store or, or Kindle store or wherever um, and see if I can find like a launch date so I can check out what the store actually looks like. Um, and then maybe I'll launch it to my list and show you how my short episode story is actually doing. And maybe I'll have some extra feedback or comments once I've seen a little bit more about how things are are working. Um, to make this make sense, I, I basically have my first three finished, which are the first three free ones. This isn't going to make any sense for me money-wise unless I'm producing more episodes quickly 
that people can spend tokens on. Um, I'm not sure I'm prepared to do that right now because I have a lot of other projects, um, but I might, you know, try to make that an, uh, a bit more of my effort over the next few months to really focus on this platform hard and see if I can at least finish the first book in this potential series, which is about 40,000 words, um, which would be like 10 episodes. That way I would have the three free episodes, seven more episodes. It would end on a brutal cliffhanger. Um, and then I could either, you know, continue rolling into book two, which I have mapped out already, or I could just try to get those readers back over to my email list or something and let them know that I have a lot of other content that's already available on Kindle Unlimited. Hope this video helps. There might be more to it. I'm not sure yet. Bye-bye.